five minutes out and ten minutes, and I've got five sub, uh, summaries throughout for your mental comfort because there's quite a few concepts in there that you might find di slightly difficult to understand because the information I get from the source sensed in the origin, um, although I understand it at an intuitive level and can and recognize what the, what the information is, even I sometimes can't put it into words, so I have to use engineering terminology or things that we do as human beings to enable us to, or to enable me, to explain it to you. Okay. Where are we? Okay. So here's the contents of what I'm going to talk about today. I'm going to talk about my awakening, um, or should I say my work in progress awakening, because I now realize that although I understand and can work with certain entities, that is very much work in progress. And I'm going to go over very, sh very, very shortly the journey, how I started to journey amongst the frequencies and what the process was that allowed me to do that, and the different entities that I met along that way. And, and these are only a few of the entities that I, met, that I met, but they're the first entities and they're relevant to the book. We also want to go through a short history of the creator of our multiverse, the, the entity that identified itself as the source entity, and the creator of it, the origin, that that is the absolute. And I want to describe the spiritual physics surrounding that multiverse, including how the dimensions are overlaid, how we can have all of these universes existing at the same time, the frequencies that inflate those dimensions, and what happens to us when we travel lower down the frequencies, because there's a significant amount of things that happen to us. And I also want to go over something else that happens within this, this multiverse, and that is um, that age-old bone of contention, time. And, and I want to describe what it, what it really is. Then I want to change the, the, the direction slightly and indicate why we are here, the importance of the Earth and the creation of mankind, and illustrate some of the spiritual functions of, of RNA and how it interfaces with DNA, because there are functions there that are not known by uh, scientists and, uh, med and medical scientists. Um, the, three in one, the unique three-in-one aspect of mankind will also be discussed because we exist in three planes con con uh, consecutively. So we're not just in the physical, we exist in, in, in the spiritual, physical, and the, 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 the spiritual as well. Um, before I go to the bigger picture, which is a message from the source sent to us all, I'd like to go through karma because karma, I believe, is, um, is greatly misunderstood and there's a lot of energetic issues surrounding karma and it's quite an insidious um, piece of energy that we need to work with and understand. So I want to go through the process of my awakening now. Okay. I've had a lifelong interest in the metaphysical, uh, right from a very early age, so say eight, and I've had a lot of different experiences of metaphysical origin. Um, one of my early, earliest memories is, is lying in my bed at home, and uh, looking across and seeing the wind rise up through the wall of my next door neighbor's house, across the roof, around the chimney, and down the other side. And that was an interesting observation because there's a wall and another house in between the house I was looking at. So I didn't realize at the time, but I was actually seeing through two houses to see this. And I shouted down to my mother, Mom, Mom, I can see the wind. And she said, Son, don't be so stupid. Nobody can see the wind. I wonder what Cinnamon Crow would have said about that as a, as a mother. <laughs> so she, uh, she, she was my dear old mother, she, uh, she didn't quite understand what was going on there. I've also had a number of different uh, episodes of astral traveling um, when I've been in my dream and then suddenly realized I'm outside and, I've been, and there's a completely different feeling about astral traveling versus being in a dream, completely different feeling. There's a completely different uh, aura about the, the atmosphere that you're in. So I understood that as being astral traveling. I've also had... Uh, a number of instances of understanding my past lives and um, one of those was, was recognizing that I'd returned from somewhere, uh, probably around the 15th, 16th century, to comfort a number of truth seekers that were huddled together in an upstairs room, hiding away from what I recognize now as being something like the witch finder general. And, and, and they were very surprised to see me and I, I, I said, so it's okay, I'm here, I'm here. And I said, well, you're dead. I said, well, I'm here. And then I remembered that they caught me and had hung, drawn, and quartered me. But that felt okay for some reason because it was my body that had suffered the problem and not my 
energetic bod uh, body, and I was still there. And those individuals in that, dr in, that, in that dream and meditation, they were there to help doing what we're doing now, which is to raise the frequencies of the earth. So, with all of these different th things that were happening to me, I, I ended up doing quite a lot of meditation during my teens, and I, and I devoured a number of texts that showed me how to meditate properly. And during one of these waking moments where I started to lie in my bed and sort of take, take in that moment where you're, you're lying down, you're meditating, you're calm, there's nothing happening around you, I suddenly was transported to an area where there was th three people in front of me. And there they were, three men in white robes, all smiling, all nodding, all exuding perfect love. And although they didn't speak to me, they communicated with me in a telepathic method. And I knew that they were telling me that what I was doing was right. What I understood was right. And the feelings that I had throughout my life to that point, and I still continue to have, about having something really quite important to do, were right. But not then. It wasn't the right time. And from that point onwards, I, I really put things on the back burner. And although I kept my sort of spiritual one eye open on, on various different texts and was interested in certain metaphysical subject matters, I really didn't go into the same level of depth that I had done um, with those meditation days previously. And that happened for basically 20 years. And in those 20 years, I was more engrossed in the physical. I became management within the business I was working for. I gained two master's degrees, different subjects. I gained chartered and electrical engineering uh, recognition, which is quite high qualifications, recognized European-wide. And really wasn't quite interested at all until a friend introduced me to Reiki. And I went to a couple of Reiki shares and started to feel energies back in my hands. I thought, well, this is interesting. And within 12 months, I became a Reiki master. Just at the point of reaching a Reiki master, I was going to an energy healer um, in Birmingham who was a, a direct student of Barbara Brennan. If you remember the, the Hands of Light books, for those of you who have read those books, they're fantastic. And Barbara Brennan is a, um, was an asset scientist, and so everything she was describing in these books that um, were part of the course, I related to, in, you know, full stop. So, my energy healer said that she was going to start a course, and she was having a suck it and see weekend. Uh, suck it and see means try it, by the way. Um, and would I be interested? And I said, yes, we'll go along. And she invited a gentleman called Rolf Stein, who ran the, the Snow Lion Center in Switzerland. And, the, and he was also a direct student of, of Barbara Brennan. And... Uh, that, that weekend was wonderful, and I really felt that this was the, the thing for me. So from that point onwards, I committed myself to four years of energy healing training based upon Brendan Healing Science. And I have to say, it was extremely difficult work and hard work, very searching, because there was a psychotherapy content to it where you had to develop yourself and get rid of your own, um, your own bad energies and, 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 and bad thinking processes based upon the work of uh, Susan and, Don and Donovan Tasenga and uh, John and Eva Piriakos. Uh, very searching work, and it, it sorts you out. And, and it's in some that we have to keep referring to all the time. But within that work, there was also uh, an element of learning how to channel and learning how to do past life healing as well as healing on different, other different levels. Now, around this time, um, the work colleague who showed me how to do Reiki or came in, into my life and, and introduced me to Reiki, had moved to Sweden and he he'd moved, to, moved to work with another car company. And, we, and my wife, Anne and I, decided we'd have a, a cheap holiday. We'd go over there and we'd stay with him and uh, we'd look around Sweden. And the place he stopped at and, and worked at was a place called Trollhattan, which is um, not too far away from Gothenburg. Now, my friend's also quite intuitive, and he received during meditation a message. And that message was he had to take me on a certain walk. And that certain walk was in this area here. And this river is just, uh, just downstream of Trollhattan. And we walked through these woods from the back of his house. His house was over this way somewhere. And we walked through all of these woods, down a towpath, 
And as you're walking down the towpath, the energy's changed from being normal to being extremely high. My hands were tingling, then my arms were tingling, then my whole body was tingling. And we all noticed that, and we thought, good grief, the energy's really high here. So I was walking down this towpath, and there was a rock. You can't see it here, but just about there. And this rock was quite a large, sizable rock, and it was totally um, out of the way of, of, of the towpath. It was like a little island. And I felt a, a desperate need to go on this rock and meditate, which I did. So my friend and my wife, Anne, carried along, and they walked up the towpath to this bridge, because they felt the need to go onto this bridge and observe what was going on. And as they observed what was going on, they, they felt that they were tuning into the energies. The energies that they felt, felt otherworldly. They didn't feel as if they were from Earth. They didn't feel magnetic. They didn't feel like they were part of any energy healing that anybody's done. Anything to do with Earth, they felt otherworldly. And when they focused their perception, and, this, and I found this out later, by the way, they said that they felt that there was entities or, be, or, or beings or vehicles hovering around the area where I was meditating. And then I was receiving a level of attunement or rewiring of my capabilities to let me access that which I wasn't currently able to do so. Anyway, while, this, uh, while they're experiencing this, I'm receiving what I can only describe as a severe piece of attunement. And it, it totally knocked, my, knocked me out. Um, afterwards, I, could, I couldn't string a sentence together. And that lasted for three days, really quite heavy.